applications of physics to dance, and there were a lot of different possibilities within this lab. So first, I wanted to kind of give you a couple of examples of how it can apply. Um, the first would be in a balance, and this is just a static equilibrium problem. So that means there's no net force or net torque. So what forces would be acting on the dancers when they're balancing? Gravity. Gravity, and then normal force. normal force. So depending on where those are relative to the axis of rotation would determine whether or not there's a torque on the dancer and whether or not they're able to balance. I also wanted to know what the pressure on my toes was when I'm dancing. So what's the equation for pressure? Force per area. So I weigh about 530 newtons, and the area of a point shoe is about 0 0.0038 meters squared. So that's a lot of pressure on my feet. You can see I'm standing on two feet. It's about 0.7 times 10 to the fifth pascals, and if I'm standing on one foot, it's about 1.4 times 10 to the fifth pascals. Um, so that's why I love dancers have bruised toes. <laughs> Um, another example would be jumps, and this is just projectile motion, which means that the dancer is accelerating in which direction? Okay. The y direction, because there's only it's only acceleration from gravity. There's no acceleration in the x direction. Um, what I did my experiment on uh, were turns, and the only reason that we're able to turn is because of friction. So. When you're exerting a force on the floor, the floor is exerting a frictional force in the opposite direction, um, and that's what's causing the torque. So the further apart your feet are, the greater your radius is, and the more torque you'll have, which is why it's easier to turn from a fourth position, which is in that picture, than from a fifth position, like this. So you'll see in my experiment that um, she always turned from a fourth position. Um, so my goal was to determine the moment of inertia of a spinning dancer, and I also so that was for one given position. And then I also wanted to study conservation of momentum as she changed her position while she was turning. So I have hot sites about percent error. Um, I decided to do this in terms of work. So work is just torque times theta for angular kinematics. Um, and then I used the angular equation for kinetic energy. Uh, and I set those equal and solved for moment of inertia. So I figured I could use video analysis to figure out how many radians they rotated and what the initial and final angular speeds were, but I wasn't quite sure how to measure torque because um, it's in a weird direction and I didn't really want to have people spinning on scales and that ended up being really complicated, but um, Matteo's sister did her into lab on finding the torque from friction on point shoes, so I used her. I was going to explain why she did that, but basically what you need to know is um, from her data, she ended up being my test subject, I found that the torque from friction on her point shoe was 1.10 newtons. So, uh, I took a video of her dancing. So I measured the, um, I was plotting the position of her knee over time, and I started from right when she went up onto her point shoe. So, right there where she's up on top of her shoe, and then right before she came down, because I was finding the negative work that was done by friction while she was turning. So that ended up being a really small value because she only turned like one and a half times and the um, torque from friction is pretty small. So then I plotted the position of her knee over time and I took an interval, a 90 degree interval in the beginning and found the time it took to do that in a 90 degree interval in the end and found the time it took to do that for angular speed. And then the total radians rotated was just um, the number of wavelengths times 2 pi. So using the equation I derived in the beginning and plugging in all of those values, I got a moment of inertia to be 1.378. And this was just for a given turn, so I did this for a bunch of different pirouettes that she did. And then, on average, her moment of inertia was about 1.576 kilograms times meters squared. And then I calculated a theoretical moment of inertia based on body mass distribution and distance of her leg from the axis of rotation. And I got experimental error of about 35%, which compared to the moment of inertia lab that we did in the beginning of the year, um, I thought that was pretty accurate. Uh, conservation of angular momentum for this, I used um, a different turn. The other term was called a pirouette. And then the one that I used for this was a fuete, where she was actually changing the position of her leg during the turn. So she's in a passe position there, and then she straightens her leg, and she actually comes down off a point for a minute. 
she's feeding more energy into the rotation when her foot's down. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So I did the same process as before where I plotted the position of her leg over time. And then, um, oh, I just used theoretical moments of inertia for this since I didn't have an experimental value for when she had a straight leg. Um, but I did the same process with body mass distribution. And then I used the same process to find um, the angular speed. I just took small intervals um, of a down rotation. And then I found that she lost about uh, 3.090. This was just one example of her momentum. And I think on average it ended up being about 26%. So I attributed that to the fact that she's putting her foot down and actually losing some of her momentum as she's stopping her foot because she was only continuing the angular momentum through her leg. Um, but other sources of error for moment of inertia would be that the position is not identical in every turn and that her body is not always centered around the axis of rotation, which I kind of assume that it was. Um, so I can use this and other dancers can use this to help them improve their technique and understand uh, why you have to do certain things to make your turns work out. It also explains the reason why uh, being thin could give dancers an advantage because if you have a very small mass and a very small moment of inertia, you'd be able to turn very quickly with um, the same amount of torque as someone else. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? I have uh, a couple questions. Um, could you go back to the uh, area slide near the beginning? Where you're calculating pressure. Uh -oh. I was worried about bruised toenails. Oh yeah. Um, is that the area of the bottom of the point shoe? Or? Yeah, it is. Okay, so it's a little deceptive then because your foot is spreading the force over a larger area. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. This was just kind of like a quick estimate. It's not 100% accurate. Sure. And also, I've noticed with my point shoes, they're very um, they're very tight around my toes, so it's not just that there's pressure from your weight downward, but there's also pressure on your toes inward. Pitching my toes that way, so. I think that's an advantage though because then you get a normal force and a frictional force on the side of your feet that way just not just the toe has to support yeah. all that force yeah. awesome um, a second question uh, from Tia's work I think uh, torque had units of Newtons yeah did it, you what, is it Newton radians well it should be Newton meters yeah Newton meters? Yeah, sorry. yeah okay uh, I'll talk to her about that <laughs> I don't know. I just, I was thinking of it more conceptually as a force, and so, I don't know. I, like, overall in my experiment, when I did, like, when I was calculating work, and it was torque times radians rotated, radians doesn't have a unit, but the torque would be newton meters, so it still works out to be joules. Is that right? So. Yes. I think the units all worked out. Okay. Cool. No more questions? All right, thanks.